Hi, welcome to the Sports Insider. I'm your host, Shabazz. As part of this show, we interview guests working in the sports industry in India and abroad. Uh, we cover a range of topics in the sports business space, such as sponsorship, media rights, esports, sports tech, data analytics, event management, and much more. Today's uh, show, our guest is Ananya Sashtev. Ananya, Ananya is, is a strategist, strategist at the Global, Global Sports, sports business, business Division at Rakuten and is based out of their headquarters in, in Tokyo. Tokyo. Ananya, Ananya has, has a master's, master's degree in sports management from the prestigious Columbia University uh, in New York City and was also a national level basketball player growing up in India. Despite being uh, based out of Tokyo, Ananya is still active in the in Indian sports business community and also runs a podcast called India Sports Biz Talks. Hi, Nanya, welcome to the show. So I'm going to start off by asking you um, if you could talk about kind of your career path and how you ended up at Rakuten in Tokyo. And uh, also, if you could speak to us about your experience working in three diverse countries, such as obviously the, of, obviously India, um, the US and, and now Japan. Yeah, well, firstly, thank you so much for having me, Shavaz. Um, really, you know, a pleasure to be a part of this show. Um, just, just to begin with, with where, how I started and how I landed up at Rakuten, um, you know, as you mentioned, I was pursuing um, a full-time degree in, in sports management, my master's in Columbia, uh, and, you know, I really got propelled to be on the business side of sports after, you know, having spent more time on court than in the classroom in my undergrad and playing for my state. Um, that's really how I realized I wanted to be full-time in the business of sports as well. And from then on, it was just about getting the right opportunity and figuring out how to go about it. Um, I think the two things that helped me most in, in landing at Rakuten was to continuously seek the opportunity, uh, any opportunity that came my way, and to hone in on the skills. I think fresh out of grad school, um, there's, there's only so much that you've been exposed to. Um, so how do you build on top of the platform that you already have? So how do you seek more opportunities and seize the opportunities that you're given? Um, for me personally, though, I was very motivated and intrigued by the market in Asia. Um, I feel there's just a lot of untapped opportunities, whether be it India, whether be it anywhere in Asia, right? And of course, Rakuten being at the helm of it, but being being one of the the front runners, um, I had to. I just jumped on the opportunity. I believe. Amazing. That's an amazing story. I I, I, I totally agree with you. Asia is a, is an amazing place. Uh, growing economies. An amazing place to be working in the sports business space um, now. So I want to like um, kind of since you work with Rakuten, I want to touch on um, you know kind of uh, the relationship you guys have as brands with right holders and how that's helped companies like Rakuten you know expand to new demographics and geographies. Obviously, we know Rakuten is a is one of the title sponsors of FC Barcelona, and then obviously you guys also sponsor the Golden Golden State Warriors. Uh, in the NBA in the US. So if you could just talk about that. Sure. Um, Rakuten essentially in Japanese, it means optimism. Um, and, you know, when you talk about sports, of course, it's, it's a leveler, it's a level playing field. Sports has that power to transcend across barriers, across cultures, uh, across geographies. Um, so we want to use sports and leverage sports to connect and build one single brand identity. So Rakuten has about 70 plus businesses across the globe, but sports is that one business or that one leveler that can integrate and cut across all those businesses and really connect everything within one ecosystem. So when you talk about those partnerships and, and you know, those, those partnerships with right, rights holders, uh, given FC Barcelona, um, you know, we're able to, to, we, we, more than calling this a sponsorship, we, we call this an equitable relationship, wherein we want to partner with the rights holder um, to go out into a new territory and supercharge fans, right? We don't just believe in treating this as a one-off sponsorship or a mar marketing effort. It's about how do we collaborate equally with a partner and create something extremely novel and innovative. So we are the official global innovation partner of FC Barcelona. Uh, last year, in fact, in 2019, which feels like a lifetime ago, uh, we organized uh, something called the Rakuten Cup, which was a three-way football tournament between FCB, Chelsea, and Bissell Kobe, which is a team in the G League, uh, for which Andres Iniesta plays for. So, you know, again, it was a very nostalgic 
tournament in many ways as well for him to face his um old teammates uh but what that was able to do was you know blend different fans from across the globe together to bring the barcelona fever uh into japan uh to empower a community to give them hope and dream um at the same time we are on the badge of the golden state warriors we call it a badge versus a patch um and you know in in nba trial phase um and what this partnership of course has has done for us is penetrate into a whole new market in the us expanded our business not only marketing but our business for the cashback system that we have specifically in the us uh on top of that stephen curry who's you know a leader in so many ways uh for our community side has is a brand ambassador of rakuten and has helped empower the community across the us and across the globe um and i think rakuten just being connected to these world leaders and world and world renowned teams um just creates so much of um a true true sense of optimism um and and true sense of community values and i think that's what we always go for so uh, my next question is uh, more india specific but uh, before that i'll just get in uh, the fact that i'm a, i'm a die hard fc barcelona fan actually i live and breathe uh, fc barcelona um oh, so um um so i i, I want to ask you um why should companies uh, like rakuten invest in sports specifically in india and the main question is how hard is it to generate a return on investment if you invest in sports other than cricket as we all know cricket is you know it's like a religion in india and then, i mean just a couple of add on questions as well uh if you could tell our viewers what kind of presence does rakuten have in india already um and you know um if they are uh, kind of looking to um, you know invest in the sports business space in india as well yeah i mean so many things in there right so many questions um yeah. and, and such um there's no one way to answer um uh, or or talk about the indian market is just so diverse um india as a country is so diverse and of course that by default makes any industry specifically especially sports so diverse and so intriguing um anybody from an investment standpoint uh looking to invest in india is should not invest in india looking for a quick return i think there's excess amount of patience that is needed to invest in a market like india um just from a logistic standpoint a very fundamental you know a uh, question that arises on every stage in india just from a logistical standpoint or or a cultural standpoint um is there enough of a blueprint for uh, investments to give a quick return um at the same time one has to be really strategic about making those investments in india you can't mimic an ipl model for any other league or any other sport uh, right uh, individual sports may not necessarily give you um very high return if you try to create a league for them uh, i think that's happened in the past and um perhaps hasn't performed as well group sports tend to perform better on a league level um leagues have to be customized as well you can't like i mentioned mimic one model that has worked for one sport which is very unfair to compare to any other sport in india because of the massive dominance that it has over the indian market so i think customization is extremely important you can't just enter with a league model thinking it's going to work from a commercial standpoint um i mean for example if you take mobile gaming um you know that's gone on to perform extremely well in india esports has gone on to perform extremely well we need to tap into what india has to offer huge numbers huge popularity uh and a sport loving nation i think indian sports fans are the most adaptable and flexible sports fans today you can introduce any sport in india and by default there will be a demographic for it, for it for, for that sport just by the sheer numbers that india has um you know baseball with mlb is just starting to penetrate into india but uh from my experience there have been uh organized baseball and softball tournaments at the national level at the university level in india been taking place for years before so now is how commercial from a commercialization standpoint leagues are looking at that value but they have existed in india for long so the adaptability and flexibility of fans has always been there of consumers has always been there it's just about being strategic and having a lot of patience for for a market like india you know you you touched upon esports and um, I worked in the esports industry as well for a year and uh, mobile esports is obviously a 
gone through the roof in India. But um, I don't know if you were aware, uh, the government recently uh, banned um, PUBG, PUBG Mobile in India as part of this plan of banning Chinese apps. And a lot of esports enthusiasts have, uh, you know, gamers, professional gamers have, uh, you know, lost jobs and, you know, lost livelihoods. So, so let's hope, um, you know, the esports industry isn't as badly affected by this ban and can um, kind of, um, you know, pick up and, you know, um, you know, get back to uh, amazing growth. Um, so, I, would, um, uh, I would add one mm, more yeah. point there. Mm, uh, since yeah. you mentioned, you know, Rakuten and India um, mm. or our presence in India, I would say mm. that um, I can answer from a non-sports perspective. Currently, mm. uh, our biggest tech uh, innovation platform mm. is uh, or tech innovation center is in India, located in, and Bangalore. It's in Bangalore. If I have some yes. yeah, yeah, that's exactly. correct. Yeah. Uh, which actually supercharges and cuts across various businesses of Rakuten, which is Rakuten FinTech and Rakuten Travel, mm. Rakuten Payments. So that's definitely helped, um, you know, massive businesses across the globe uh, mm. to 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 become empowered and and develop and adapt to those solutions. Um, so that's something that at least that that we do have in India currently. Uh, from a sports perspective, obviously, mm. you know, always looking for uh, an opportunity uh, from mm. a business standpoint. And I think if that mm. makes sense, then um, we truly believe in optimism and, and innovation. So mm. won't leave any stone unturned then. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, so, you know, obviously, I uh, want to touch upon, obviously, um, we're going through a pandemic um, globally and um, it's affected, um, you know, uh, pretty much every single industry and the sports industry has been um, really adversely affected. Um, I want to ask you, how has the pandemic affected, um, you know, relationships between sponsors, brands such as Rakuten and the right holders, for example, you know, SP Barcelona? Because, you know, obviously a lot of uh, matches, leagues, um, you know, for example, the French Football League, uh, like they uh, they called it off, they didn't complete the season. So obviously there is has to be, there must be disputes between, you know, media rights, uh, you know, broadcasters and sponsors because a lot of games have been called off and, you know, a lot of uh, kind of uh, potential revenue has been lost. Um, so I don't know uh, if uh, if you want to maybe talk about this and um, how companies like Rakuten have uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, have, have, how have you guys spoken to your, to the right holder, rights holders and maintain your relationship? Right. I mean, that's a great question. Um... Essentially, what the pandemic has done, uh, specifically speaking to the sports industry, is it's accelerated all of the things that people already had in mind and had planned for the next few years. All of those things that, that were meant to happen in a few years are now going to happen very soon or, or sooner than expected. Um, you know, when you talk about uh, the, the rise of esports, it's now changed into the dominance of esports. Every organization now is thinking of how do we digitize different assets, right? So digitization of sports was already taking place. Now, it, more than a recommendation, it's become a necessity. So that's something that, that the pandemic has done um, to different industries, but also specifically to the sports industry. Um, of course, you know, nothing is going to replace live events and the experience that that creates. But I think we're going to see a very hybridized model very soon uh, with with a mix of online and offline uh, taking place just just to keep fans engaged but also maintaining uh, protocol um, and and maintaining um, what would what people would expect to be uh, after a pandemic um, when you talk about our relationship specifically with rights holders mm -hmm. We are again thinking of, uh, you know, not being tone deaf, you know, at this point, it's not about what is working in our favor and what is working in your favor. We want to create, we understand the situation everybody is in uh, and we want to go ahead and create um, and something innovative, something of a win-win situation. If we can come out of this pandemic with a win-win for both us and the rights holders um, or other teams and leagues, or the franchises that we own, then that is really going to be a winner of, of winner or, or a model for succession uh, for businesses going forward. Um, you know, with FC Barcelona, the discussions were how do we get together and, and create something that that is of a long lasting partnership. Right. Um, so it's not just pandemic focus, but helps us really leverage this opportunity that we have. So we created something very interesting. It's an activation that we ran um, where wherein we collected fan, um, 
fans cheering on their teams from across the world. Um, and the selected few photos will now become, uh, will be created into a mosaic and be put on the facade of Camp Nou. So oh, wow. that's something that, you know, um, something innovative that came out of uh, this, this, uh, or I, could, I guess, lack of live sports. Uh, but mm-hmm. that's, that's the innovation that we're talking about in order to continue building on this relationship, right? Uh, mm-hmm. We don't want to treat this as a one-way street. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's funny. I actually wanted to ask if I can be part of uh, that competition because I'm a diehard fan. I would love to have uh, my picture on uh, at the Camp Nou. Um, but but you're right, like, you know, it's, it's about the long term and, you know, I mean, you know, obviously we'll get over the pandemic and, you know, things will hopefully normalize, um, you know, in some time. And then you, you obviously have to, like, you know, look at the long term relationship. Um, so my next question is uh, something again related to India. Um, I know you grew up in India, uh, in Delhi, uh, I believe. And um, I want to ask you, why has our country, um, you know, massively underperformed on the global sporting stage? I mean, you look at like, you know, the amount of medals we win at the Olympics, uh, despite the population we have. Why is our country not considered a sporting country? And how can we do more to encourage the youth not only to, um, you know, pick up sports, but pick pick them up as a career? And I I know you were obviously a national level basketball player. So, um, I mean, I'm sure you have your uh, view and perspective on this. Yeah, um, this is this question often becomes personal to me, like you mentioned, because of having been a competitive level athlete in India, um, and often thinking of or come across individuals often, you know, asking these questions. Um, I think from a fundamental standpoint, there needs to be more of a cultural integration um, into Indian sports. Uh, there's a lot that is happening right now at the commercial level with all the leagues that you see taking place with sports business professionals and schools and educational programs, uh, you know, people stepping out of out of their comfort zones and creating things that are innovative, but more so on the commercial level. Now, when you still follow that or take a step back uh, to a very grassroots level or, or a grassroots approach, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm confident that the things that are happening now with, you know, integrations into uh, the Kalo India games or, uh, you know, a new CBSE or school system being developed um, for sports students specifically, I'm still not sure how much of a cultural integration there is of promoting sports uh, and creating a blueprint. Uh, I'm not, I'm not yet sure where, because I've not heard of, you know, not even once during this pandemic has the conversation of university athletes currently in India come up. You know, how are they going through their college trials right now? Uh, what is happening with national level players? Are they even getting to play? Those honestly are the only last few years uh, of performance that those athletes have. Um, and I think they're getting bereft of that. So is enough really happening or was enough really happening at the grassroots level? Um, that a pandemic um, that that could survive a pandemic, uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, the other thing, when you come to the commercials aspect, is we start to respect our athletes more when they reach a certain stature, when they've made um, a bit of a name for themselves. So that es- essentially that it draws me back to my blueprint point. It's only if you can actually create a blueprint from high school to college to you know these professional leagues. Um, and in between that, uh, practice or scrimmage leagues, more of international opportunities, international exposure. Will you be able to leverage and hone, let these athletes hone in on their skills? You know, it's, it's difficult for an athlete to reach their peak at 21, 24, 28 and expect them to perform well. Um, the gap widens when they get to that stage against their international counterparts. We aren't tapping into this talent when they're 13, when they're 11, when they're 15, you know, we're, we're only tapping into them when they're 20, in their 20s. I think, I think that delays us massively. Um, and just last point would be, um, and this is often forgotten or not spoken enough about, is the coaches. Uh, I mean, how many high performance institutes do we have in India currently? Uh, and how are we educating our coaches? Uh, You know, one-off programs are great, but I think we need more of a sustainable model to educate our coaches as well and to actually empower them more than anything so that they can, you know, give that, spread that knowledge out to more students, uh, more athletes in India and just grow the game, their respective games. 
I think those are some fundamental aspects that are missing, but I'm fairly confident that with all that's happening now, um, we, we should see positive results on a global stage. It's interesting you talk about a few points culturally, commercially, and obviously coaching. And, you know, commercially, I mean, as a, as a teenager, as a, I, I, I mean, as a, before a teenager, I actually wanted to become a professional tennis player. I took up tennis and then I'm a diehard golfer. I wanted to become a professional golfer. But I think commercially, uh, you know, it's still a little hard to uh, make a living out of sports if you play in India, if you really don't reach the top. I think we're, change, we're seeing a change in cricket wherein, you know, before it was only people who made it to the uh, national, the Indian team, cricket team, but now you have the IPL and, you know, people, uh, you know, these cricketers, they play two, I mean, if they play two months a year in the IPL and they can make lots of money and they make a good living. So I think, I think um, you know, as, as the sports, uh, as, you know, Obviously, you know, companies, sponsors um, start investing in sports. Uh, there's more money in the game. Um, more people, I guess, um, start picking up as a career. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to end by asking you, um, how is technology and artificial intelligence, how is it changing the way you activate your brand um, through sports partnerships? And obviously, like you you know, mentioned earlier, the pandemic has um, you know, accelerated a lot of uh, things when it comes to you know, digitization and going digital. So, I mean, maybe you can talk about, uh, uh, you know, what Rakuten does um, um, with, 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 right, with, with the rights holders, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, at its heart, you know, we are, we are a tech company. Uh, mm-hmm. So, technology has obviously been at the center stone of everything that we've done. Uh, we, we have our own messaging platform called Viber, which reaches across one plus billion members across the world. And, and with that messaging platform itself, um, we've been able to create some very unique digital activations, digital integrations. Um, we There is a massive community for FC Barcelona, which I highly recommend you to be a part of as well, um, which, you know, you get real-time updates. There's been some cool, innovative sticker packs that fans can chat with, that fans can use to convey messages or cheer on their teams. Um, there's also a chat board that can immediately tell you the score of the day or updates on your favorite player. Uh, so it can be customized as, and the dashboard can be customized based on how you want to view your team. Um, also, uh, I would say on, on the tech side, uh, very interestingly, we own Vissel Kobe, which is a team that plays here in the J League in Japan, um, as well as uh, the Rakuten Eagles, which is a baseball team that plays here in the Nippon Baseball Professional League. Um, and both of them have used the Rakuten fintech system uh, to create a cashless payment system uh, as part of a new smart stadium concept. Um, so I think it's really just about moving with the times and integrating technology in a way that benefits not only the team, which was, you know, going to uh, fasten sales, um, you know, increase, you know, it's less, less wait time. Uh, increase your point of sales, uh, but also for the fans that 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 prefer these technologies to be integrated. And I think uh, moving with the times and keeping the pandemic in mind as well. These these are te- technology is going to be a huge uh, part of how um, the revival of the economy, especially sports, is going to take place. That's all the time we have for today. Ananya, thank you so much for being on the show. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you for watching. For more content, subscribe, like, and share.